Smurfs. Papa Smurfs, and then what did you call the the other Batman? The Batman. The Batman. They remind me of like, on, the old Donnie. school Batman with the, the gray and the black, you know, and like it was like pow, kapow, yeah. it showed up on the screen. Yeah. We should incorporate that into this live stream. Yeah. I, These I guys in the back can make that happen. <laughs> I think that would be great. I want to get a sound drop of you saying, I am Batman. Come on. No. <laughs> not going to do it. Jared here with two tens. He's going to move all in on the short stack. Million. Shoving for 1.4 million. Sire right behind him with two nines. Good hand, but she's one upped in this case. Mm -hmm. 1.4 million. Going into the hand, I think uh, Jared had about 16 big blinds. Sai had about 34, 35. This be effectively half her stack if she calls. She chooses to go all in instead. Everyone else folds. Sai looks a little disgusted that uh, her nines are beaten, but what are you going to do in this case? Jared is the one at risk. He's doing a little dance. He's feeling good right now with two tens over the two nines of Sia. We still got five cards to come. Tom Brady swagger. Eight six four. Jared stays in the lead. Looking at these graphics on screen, you see the percentage for Jared to win is at 90%. King of clubs on the turn. Jared maintains his lead with two tens. Sia's going to need nine to knock him out. River is the ace of clubs. Jared's going to double up. Welcome back, everyone, to the final table of the WPT Gardens Poker Classic, or Poker Festival, main event. My name is Donnie one. Peters. I'm here with Sam Cariotti, calling the action as we play down to a winner in this first event, season 17 of the WPT. Picking up the action here on an 8-6-3 flop with two diamonds. Jake Schindler versus Menwin. Jake's got 9-6 for second pair and a flush draw. Men a7, ace high. Min check. Both players check to the Three turn where three of clubs appears. Jake bets 275,000. <coughs> Men calls. Ten of hearts on the river. Jake's two pair is best. Jake checks. Jake checks over to men. Men checks and Jake's going to take this one down. You'll see there are five players remaining in the WPT Gardens main event from the Gardens Casino in Southern California. Jared Griner was our sixth place finisher, taking home 115,000. These five players are all guaranteed $151,995 in prize money. Up top is 565000 Plus a Mercedes-Benz SLC Roadster thrown in by the Gardens Casino. 
Simon Lamb, who's over in C1, is the current chip leader. More than 10 million in chips. Sizable lead over the rest of the pack. Craig Varnell, who's seated to hit Simon's left, is in second place. Man win here. Gonna start this one off with a raise from under the gun with the King Eight of Clubs. Makes it 350,000 to go. Play folds around to Saya Ono in the big blind. Saya's our shortest stack. She makes the call. Looks like Saya has about 1.4, 1.5 million behind. 5-3-3 five, three, three, flop, three two hearts, Saya checks. Men moves all in, Saya gives it up. Thank you all for joining us here at WPT Gardens, the kickoff event of Season 17 of the World Poker Tour. In about 10 minutes or so, we're going to have a local poker pro, Key Lee, is going to join in and add some expert commentary. Flop here. Men picks up top pair with his king eight. We can only see the three of clubs for Saya. Her second card is unknown. But she comes out firing 150,000. Men, Men announces all in. in. Second hand in a row. He's shoving on Saya. Saya gives it up. Men shows the king. And he's going to take down the pot. If you're wondering sometimes why only one card shows, there's a reader there that generates the graphic. And if somebody uh, doesn't place it correctly on the area or if their chips are in the way, it won't always pick that up. Uh, we've made that note. The tournament staff are letting the players know just to rearrange their chips to make sure uh, that we can get a read on, on both cards. Saya here, queen jack of hearts on the button. She announces that she's all in. Just more than one million. Men win here, picks up ace jack suited in the small blind. Can't see him not at least calling. All in for one million fifty thousand. Min also goes all in. Min shoves to isolate. He's going to have Sai on the ropes here and dominated. Sai is going to be looking to double up. She's all in with Queen Jack of Hearts. Men's got Ace Jack of Clubs. Eight seven three flop two clubs. Turn is the deuce of clubs, giving Min the nut flush, and he's going to take Saya out in fifth place. Saya Ono, she takes home $151,000 for her fifth place finish in this event. Career best score, nearly doubling the $187,000 she came into this tournament with in terms of her live tournament earnings. Local cash game player have been getting into tournaments a lot more uh, lately. She's going to add a nice fifth place finish in this WPT Gardens main event to her resume, and I'm sure we'll be seeing a lot more of her going forward. I think so well. 
so well. All right, at this time, I would like to introduce into the booth a local uh, poker pro here, Ki Lee. Um, he's going to join uh, Donnie in the booth here for a while, and we welcome his expert analysis. Hey guys, this is uh, Key Lee, How's also it going, Key? known as uh, Captain Key. Captain Key, I like it. Anyone who comes in with a nickname like that is A-OK -okay in my book. How you doing? Good, how about yourself? Doing very well, thank you. Down to four players here. Everyone's guaranteed more than $200,000, so it seems like a pretty, uh, I mean, it's been a pretty fairly tight, hasn't been too crazy at the final table so far. But things have been picking up late as lines move up and shacks get a little stacks get a little shallow. Yeah, it should be an uh, exciting uh, final table here. We have Simon here with Queen Jack of Hearts against Craig with Jack Deuce. Craig picks up a flush draw on the flop. Yeah, they both got something. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what um, happens on the blank turn. See if um, Simon continues to barrel. Bet from Simon, 300K, Craig makes the call. Turn is the four of clubs giving Craig a flush. Now Simon, is he, is he gonna try to represent the flush? No. Simon's been playing pretty snug, pretty straightforward uh, for most of the final table. Craig does bet his flush here. I think Simon's just gonna chuck fold. I can't see him um, doing anything else here. I mean, if he has queen jack with like queen of clubs, you know, he can he can call or uh, check raise. But with queen jack of hearts, there's really not much he can do. He's thinking about it though. Throws in a time extension chip for an extra 30 seconds on the action clock. Simon was the commanding chip lead. He can um, make some aggressive moves, but this will be a bad time. Simon elects to check raise. Craig quickly shoves. Yeah. Simon drawing dead. Craig all in looks for four million. Simon's check raise was to 1.3 million. Craig shoved for 4.4. Simon gives it up. Bad timing there from, from Simon trying to make a move, pick up the pot. Yeah, I think it would have been better to make the move with a uh, blocker, you know, if you had Queen Jack with uh, Queen of Clubs. It blocks the villain from having a flush and also gives him some equity in the hand. Now, what do you think about two things about Craig's shove? One, so quickly. Right. Two, should he maybe just call and try and get more value on the turn, or is that, is that too much of a red flag, just calling, putting that much of a stack in, and then, you know, it kind of tips Simon off? Well, when Simon check raises there, he really shouldn't be bluffing all that much. And even if he was bluffing, I'm not sure if he's going to follow through on the river if uh, he gets called. So he's probably just trying to protect his hand versus, like, two pairs or sets. Um, or a higher flush draw. And the master and raising it up with ace eight offsuit. Blinds are 150, 75, 150 ante. And the man, uh, man the master raises to 350. And Simon calls with queen 10 offsuit. Have you played much with the big blind ante? Yourself. You know, um, this is the first time actually playing um, with the big blind ante uh, structure. I think it's great. It speeds up the game. Mm -hmm. It's uh, good for the players and the dealers. Yeah. That's what most uh, most everyone says. Everyone seems to to love it pretty unanimously. Simon has open ended here with queen ten on a king jack three rainbow flop, and men the master just has a side. We only know one of Jake's cards right now, just the seven of spades. 
And this bet should take it down unless uh, Jake has king seven. He does not. He gives it up. Men follow suit right after him. And Simon takes this one down. Get some chips back after after losing that hand to Craig on the last one. Simon still the chip leader with almost nine million in chips. Simon first act folds. Craig folds over to Jake. Now Jake in the small blind with Jack Jake eight offsuit. He completes action over to Mend the Master. Queen six offsuit, and he checks the option. Flop of king of diamonds, queen of spades. King, queen, jack flop. Middle pair for men the master, and bottom pair for Jake. Jake check. Check, check, going to the turn. King of clubs pairs the board. Now I'm surprised uh, Menda Master checked the turn. He should be going for a little bit of value. Now three and did kings. So, so quickly. Right. Both players with full houses here. Now does Jake have any reason not to think his hand isn't good? I would think, um, if I was in Jake's shoes, I would think I have the best hand. I'd make a small bet, try to get called by Asi or Flush. Min, min raises, it's gotta be Yeah, that's an interesting raise. Um, men the master min raises uh, Jake's bet. I mean, with queen, it's safe to think that you have the best hand here, but it's a somewhat of an ambitious raise. He Jake does get called. Jake does call, yes. He's going to see that he has the second best full house. Men gives a little fist bump to his fans. Round of applause. He's going to take it down. I mean, there really is no... No reason for Jake not to think he has the best hand here earlier right. on the river, just given the way that the action played out. But to men's credit, he did play it well enough to get some extra value on the end. Forehand at playing for five hundred fifty thousand dollar first place prize, plus a car, Mercedes yeah. Benz. Folds to Jake here on the button with King Eight of Diamonds. He just calls one hundred fifty k. Open limping from the button. You don't see that too often. Even uh, open limping from the blinds, from the small blinds, it's been somewhat of a new phenomenon. And, uh, yeah, the players have definitely been subscribing to that strategy from the small blind a lot uh, at this final table. Right. Man calls with Jack Deuce. Yeah, we've got a three-way limp pot. Simon's got Jack seven in the big blind. He checks. Ace, king, queen on the flop, two clubs. Jake's in front with the best hand with a pair of kings. Men's first act. And both players, Men and Simon, both have gush up to the 10. Min checks. Simon checks. Good trap, man. Jake checks. Turn card is the six of hearts. Checks around to the turn, six of hearts. Jake, Jake maintains ahead. his lead. Min checks. 
men with the emphatic, emphatic. check, slamming his knuckles on the table. Knife here, Jake here, do you bet here after the flop got checked through? I mean, there's uh, a lot of draws. There's clubs and hearts and straight draws. Jake checks. Right, checks. River card is five, five of clubs on the river. Flush draw that was there is now completed. Men checks, men checks again. Simon checks Simon again. Checks. Jake also Vin checks. Jack. He's going to take down the pot with a pair of kings. Vin shows Jack yeah, everybody playing um, pretty safe and uh, conservative. Nobody, diamonds, um, nobody took a Vin shot Vin at that pot. Simon had uh, Jack-7 with Jack of Clubs. Uh, that could have been an interesting river card to take a shot at. Yeah, with that, that blocker in his hand. <laughs> right. Overall, it's been a fairly snug final table. People haven't been getting too out of line. Simon did open it up uh, more recently, probably in the last hour, hour and a half just given uh, his chip lead, but mm -hmm. no one's been getting too nuts. Yes, Simon, from my understanding, has uh, some online cash background. He's uh, friends with uh, some of my friends. Okay. And um, play some serious online poker back in the heydays. Men here on the button. Ace five of diamonds opens it to 350,000. Craig's going to come along from the big blind with 7-4 off. Ten eight deuce, two clubs. Both players miss, men still ahead. But he does have backdoor straight draw and backdoor flush draw. This is a pretty good flop to um, see bet, and he should uh, be able to take it down. And he checks it back. Now the five gives uh, Craig a gush shot and Menda Master a pair of fives. And Craig leads out. Craig's been uh, pretty active at this final table in terms of recognizing spots where he can take the initiative. Right. Now it's my understanding that Craig has a WPT title. He has a WPT 500 title. Mm. Uh, so $500 buy-in, million dollar guarantee. He won that back in 2015 in Las Vegas, more than 5,000 entries. And then he, uh, in season 15, he made the final table of WPT Choctaw, placed uh, third in that event for 300,000. So a lot of WPT experience, won a bracelet this summer at the World Series of Poker. So certainly been around the block a bit and knows what he's doing up there. Same uh, as with uh, Men the Master. Mm -hmm. He's been at a couple final tables. Certainly, yeah. Men also 10.6 million in live tournament earnings, seven WSOB Men bracelets. Second. Feels like thousands oh, wow. of cash. He holds the best hand. Uh, he gives it up there after taking an extra 30 seconds with a time extension chip. I'm a little surprised. You know, when you check back the flop, that should um, induce the villains to bet a wider range than y if you have Steve at the flop. Mm -hmm. So that means you have to defend a little wider if you check back the flop as the pre-flop reason. But men, let's it go. Men is going to be first to act. Four-handed, first to act, men the master, full. Simon Lamb here on the button really see him raising any two cards at this point given and position and his chip stack. As the king of clubs makes it 350k. Jake in the big blind, jack nine off. Should be a pretty easy defend. You know, with tournament poker when everybody's raising so small, it's hard to think of hands that you fold from the big blind if you're you know, especially when he sets up. Jack 7 5 flop here. Jake picks up top pair. From what we can see, he's got the lead. Yeah, Interesting Simon flop, though, with two clubs because Simon does have the king of clubs. There has been a lot of defending from the big blind at this final table, um, pretty much with anything. You know, there's been yeah. a couple times where there's been some really bad hands that have folded, but as you just saw from Craig with the 7 4, there's been a lot of those. Um, you know, two or three gappers, smaller connected cards that aren't necessarily suited that people have been defending with and they've not been, been scared to play. 
Yeah, as they should. When you're getting such a good price and you're closing the action with Annie in there and it's a min raise, a lot of cards can be played profitably. Check here from Drake. Yeah, Jake, bet of 300,000. Jake's going to check raise. That could become his new nickname, Jake the Drake. <laughs> A Jake check raise there. Yeah, check raise to eight hundred thousand. That's an interesting Simon check raise. Simon goes all in. Say. Jake's wow. gonna make Jake a call here. Call. Simon shows king of clubs. Simon, nine Simon of should clubs. show two clubs here, likely, and he does. He shows the king nine of, of clubs. Nine of diamonds. Jake's gonna have to fade it with his top yeah. pair, he's or he's gonna be out in outs. fourth place. Got a, any king or a club. The turn card is a deuce of hearts. Deuce of hearts is a good card for Jake. One more card to go. River Five of hearts. And Jake, and Jake is gonna double, double up. up. And he's a tough opponent. Um, Very the tough. The wrong guy to uh, double up if you're the chip leader. But given the stacks, um, you, it was just a situation where both players, uh, both players are gonna get all in. Jake was top pair with a fairly shallow stack, and Simon had over card and a flush draw. That double up for Jake there moves him back over five million in chips. Men the master, now the short stack. Still with over thirty big blinds though in his stack, so plenty of play. Yeah, initially Greg Barnell is now the chip leader. Initially, I was a little time. surprised that uh, Jake's uh, check raise was Jack Nine, but it looked like uh, they were pretty short. So you can yeah, see Jake was on the shorter side. So, so yep. you can see these um, check raises that you wouldn't see in like a deeper stack situations. Craig on the button with Ace Deuce off here. Any ace on the button, four-handed, it's going to be a raise. Jake giving Craig a little bit of stare down. These two have had an interesting action. dynamic uh, throughout the final table. Oh, wow, it looks like he's shoving. Here you see Jake moving Jake all in. All in. Million. Which is quite a big shove. Five thousand, and with that raise all in, is going to take down the pot. Especially into the chip leader, Craig Varnell. Craig gives it up, and Jake's going to take it down. Power poker from Jake Schindler. Yeah, you know, all four players have some experience in um, either final table or high stakes poker, so I expect to see some interesting hands go down. Yep. Jake was ace king suited. On the button, he raises to 400. Simon makes the call. Simon defends from the big line with ace 10 off. Now, ace flop would be trouble. Hmm. Is five, five four, four deuce here. Both players pick up the low end of a straight draw. Now Jake has a pretty good hand. He has two over cards and backdoor flush draw and a gush shot. Jake checks. And he decides to check. Turn card is an eight of spades. Eight of spades on the turn. Simon checks. Now, if you're Jake here, um, do you bet the turn? I mean, East King does have pretty good showdown value. He decides to check it back. A lot of players um, playing very um, snug, like you said, and carefully. It looks like he's just going to get to showdown here. Check, check. Jake's going to take it down with East King high. 
Jake shows ace of clubs. Wins another pot, been on a little bit of a roll here. The ace high with the king. And wins the pot. You're watching the final table of the WPT Gardens main event from the Gardens Casino in Southern California. $5,000 buy-in, 584 entries. Four players are left. They're all guaranteed more than $200,000. <laughs> My name is Donnie Peters. I'm joined here by Key Lee. Hey, guys. Um, you can follow me on Instagram. Uh, it's Captain Key, Captain underscore Key. Craig Varnell there you see in the orange Denver Broncos hat. He's the current chip leader. 7.125 million in chips. All right. Cards are now out. Simon and Craig on the blinds. Jake's going to be first in action. Jake here looks down at a 10-5. He's going to let that go. Mend the master on the button. Raises it up. Four of hearts, and you can't see the other card yet. Craig here's got the king jack in the big blind. Ask him to eye men's stack. He makes the call, we see heads up. Men the master has ace four offsuit. Ace of diamonds, four of hearts. Nine, eight, deuce, two spades on the flop. Craig first to act. He checks. Both players miss. Now, I saw Menda Master just check when he didn't hit the flop. I wonder if he's just um, going to check here as well. He does check. Ten of clubs on the turn. Craig picks up a straight draw. Men still with the best hand, holding the ace high. Now this is a great card for um, Craig to come out and bet, especially when the flop got checked through. Craig he bet. picked up Five equity, he has two over cards, gut shot, and he has um, the range advantage. Now I can't see Men the Master doing anything but folding here. But that's what I said earlier when <laughs> <laughs> Simon check raised. Men does give it up. Nice Your intuition was on point key. here with a raise to 400,000. He's got the ace king of clubs. Momentarily, we're going to bring in Kevin Quintanilla. Some of you have seen and heard him on the microphone around the final table here. He is the tournament manager here at the Gardens Casino. We're going to talk to him a little bit about having this World Poker Tour event here to kick off season 17. We're going to talk to him about the action clock as Kevin is one of the creators of that. And just generally, uh, things about the Gardens Casino. They are now a WPT tournament room. What does that mean? Well, stick around three and find out. Got a three-way flop. Well, Queen, five, hearts, four, two hearts spades, here. Four hearts. And Simon was the best hand. And the master has just two over cards. Jake has an over card and a gut shot and a backdoor flush draw. A deuce on the turn would be an action card. Simon, um, when it got checked to him, he's betting. 
Uh, he's betting mostly for protection here with uh, deuces. Now with Jake, he has an interesting decision. He has the backdoor flusher, he has a gush out, he has an overcard. He could consider checking or even check raising. Looks like he makes the call there. The ace of hearts, along with being a backdoor flush draw, serves as a blocker, um, which could, you know, play into the hand as well, especially for such an experienced player like Jake. Nine of spades on the turn. Complete brick. Now, if you're Simon, you probably just check this back, try to get to showdown, right? It's really hard to get called by worse when you bet deuces again on the turn. Unless you're turning it into a bluff, but I mean, Deuces has uh, plenty of showdown here, so I'd imagine he'll just check. Ten seconds. But Fine Simon uh, takes some time to think about this. And looks like he is going to make a bet. Pretty thin Fine bet, bets. but. He could still get called by draws, and he can potentially fold up better hands like threes or... Um, yeah, is he simply turning his hand into a bluff here as opposed to going for value? I'm not sure. I mean, it would be a really thin value bet, um, but it functions better as a bluff here than a value bet, in my opinion. Jake gives it up. And Simon takes it down. Whether or not it was a value bet or a bluff, it worked. And with that, we are going to bring in Kevin Quintanilla from the Gardens Casino. Kevin. Hello. How are you? Uh, doing good, yeah. Double uh, duty. You're out there on the microphone. Now you're in here on the microphone. How's it going? Uh, very busy, and um, that's a good thing. That so is a good thing. They yes. always say busy is good. Busy is, is, is very good, yes, um, especially when you have that this many poker tables, cash yes. game and tournament. And of course, we also have table games on the other side as well and everything. So, yeah, it's a pretty busy uh, time for us and uh, exciting time as well for the Gardens Casino. So let's, uh, let's get right into that. Um, the Gardens Casino, I've been here a couple times now. And it's absolutely beautiful. $90 million upgrade recently within the past, what, year and a half, two years, something yeah, like that? Yeah, we opened it a little over two years ago in the new building, right. So just tell us a little bit about I heard this place used to be a tent. So it's come a long way if it did used to be a tent. Yeah, so it actually started uh, with the, the bingo hall, actually, which is down the street now. And then um, they started with a trailer to make it a card room. In California, games of skill are permitted. Poker being a game of skill, card games, game of skill. So that's why you won't mm -hmm. see uh, you know, craps, roulette, or, you know, slot machines here. But uh, so it started with a trailer, and then they got into a, a tent to expand. And then with there, they built some structure with the, uh, you know, the tents expanded to huge tents, and then basically became known as kind of like the big top, if you will, because just big tents. And then um, the general manager, Ron Sarabi, had a dream of this facility that we're in now, which is basically state-of-the-art facility here and he's been working on it for so long we finally opened it a little over two years ago and he had such a direct hand in the design of it the layout just everything on what he wanted his vision and it's really come through and and we've actually been rewarded with it because as a poker player somebody working in the industry me being both uh it's as i call i like to call it it's a year-round poker paradise it has a very simple setup with the two sides, but it's like perfect. It's simple, but it works just on the one side you have, on the far side you have kind of the tournament okay. section, and then you have the cash game section, and then in the middle you have the bar and restaurant, and then on the other side you have the table game section. Yeah, table games, as I like to call them carnival yeah, games, <laughs> things that did the fun, you know, um, Baccarat, Blackjack, you know, Ultimate Texas Hold'em, things yep. like yep. that. Um, and then, um, at the end of the uh, the cash game floor, there's a just the, one of the most beautiful uh, VIP poker rooms you're just ever going to see anywhere. Um, and then towards the back uh, from the cages and everything there from each side, there's the event and center. And, you know, beautiful staircase yeah, okay. with waterfalls and, and everything like that. So we can house up to uh, 
about 75 tournament uh, table, poker tables wow. out there in the event center for the larger events Thanks, that we're planning on in the future, Mindo. as well as other special events we've had um, up there. Americans. So uh, so it's pretty good. The space it works well, the bar in the middle of the restaurant. There's even a back area there where we have a special 999 party pit uh, every Friday night. So, you know, we've got a club. We have a lot of things going on here entertainment-wise to keep keep you basically keep you coming back and having a variety. Very cool. I've uh, I've walked around the, the poker room a lot. I've seen games every level, all different types of games. So tell us a little bit about what the Gardens Casino offers in terms of a poker offering. Yeah, I mean, uh, the term they like to use a lot of times I've heard it say is a plethora of games, you know, and, and that always reminds me of Monday Night Football back in the day with Dan <laughs> Deardorff and those guys. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, so we have a plethora of games. I mean, from 20 no limit, 40 no limit buy-in, where you buying in for $40 and the blinds are, you know, one and two. And the people are out there eating their pepper steak and just playing <laughs> and having fun on a lunch break even uh, to $5,000, $10,000 no cap no limit in the VIP, people buying in for, you know, 50000 to to 100000 and then they'll, they're will they pretty much six days a week running like a 200, 400 limit. I walked back there in that, uh, game, that you know? VIP area. You mm -hmm. saw Perry Greenstein back there. I've seen Mike, Ma Mike, no, Mike Mattis out back there. A lot of uh, a lot of big name players that were not only here for the tournament, but also the cash game action. So it's good to see best of both worlds going on here at the Cards Casino. And you did bring up the food. I've had a lot this week being here, and it's awesome. It's right. great, so thank you very much for uh, having such a great venue and uh, great food on offer. Yeah, we're really known for our food. Uh, I see two of the best uh, known items are the uh, black pepper steak and the uh, galbi ribs, the, short, the Korean short ribs, the galbi ribs. Uh, we have definitely a variety of, of food to choose from, but those two seem to be uh, very popular. Awesome. They, awesome. they eat them up here. So. Um, how is the uh, the stream going with the the live play here for the obviously I'd like to talk about the gardens I could talk about the gardens all day yeah, I, of course I, as you can talk, probably tell but I'm just super excited also about this <laughs> final table because it's I mean it's obviously official opening day of the World Poker Tour season 17 I mean just a mind blowing field from what I think the, if there was an over under set on this for 584 yeah. entries and uh, this final table I just think it's a, it's a final great final table great a lot of big names came out here uh, post world series you kind of never know what you're going to get post world series if people are just going to go home you know they've had a long summer seven weeks out in vegas or are they going to just stay on the grind with the number being 584 it looks like they all wanted to just stay on the grind they came out here um, one of the best parts about the 584 number is the fact that you guys had more than 50 satellite qualifiers in the field yes yeah uh, yeah we, we couple of them were in four and very deep too yeah, we have one specifically, Alice Sanchez, which um, a lot of our regulars see a lot. Um, she's a she's a lady that plays here. I would say eight days a week, if you will. Um, she she's she'll play the afternoon and she'll go right into our evening daily. It's always really cool to see the the camaraderie that gets behind a local player when they satellite in, and then everyone's like, "Oh my God, I played with her in this game. I played with her in this game." And then you're kind of all best friends, but it's it's cool because you just. Not all the, the smaller players get to play in such a big buy-in, and when they do, they get all those people backing them in support because they're doing it for the home crowd. So that was really cool to see, and just seeing everyone that was kind of cheering for all the satellite players is super cool. A couple of them, like you said, ran, ran really deep. Alice had a great run as well. So, yeah. And then speaking of satellites, uh, WPT Tournament Room here at the Gardens Casino. So there's going to be plenty of satellites. Yeah, so the uh, so not only have a multi-year deal here for to basically, as you said about with the World Series, and I like to call it summer camp, right for poker is right after summer camp every year. Um, you know, we understand you're going to Nevada, you're going to Las Vegas, uh, but right after summer camp every year, it's only uh, a four-hour drive, guys. We've so got you know. uh, three and a half. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, well, depending I'm, on how I'm fast sorry. you go, <laughs> uh, please obey if all traffic signs out and front, speed limits. Right. Three hours, okay. <laughs> so yeah, so according to uh, you know. Google Maps or whatever, yeah, it's four and a half hours. But <laughs> I don't know anybody that takes, you know, that long to get there, uh, except on a, obviously a weekend or a traffic log. So, but basically, yeah, so every year we're, you know, we're looking to be here, official North American opening day for, for the, the, the new season of the WPT main tour stop. So obviously this season being se season 17, yep. the Gardens is the official opening day. And we're creating something special there. And, um, you know, to the top, all the way to the top, they really wanted to put something special, wanted to, to make sure everybody was aware that we were here, and they added 200000 in cash into the prize pool. 
Uh, over 50,000 in prizes with the Mercedes-Benz SLC Roadster for first place to go along with the Champions Cup trophy that the WP offers. So it uh, makes it very prestigious. Obviously, uh, as a poker player, I like to look at that. At, I would say that's dead money because it's 200000 added. So um, what poker player doesn't want to play? It's the truest play? form of dead money you right. can have. So I mean, people always refer to satellite winners as dead money, but they're still players who have chips and have to play against you so they can beat you. This is just straight cash added to the prize pool. No matter what happens, you don't have to beat out that money that's in the prize pool. It's right. there for the taking. Yeah, so with with that, uh, I think it was something created special for that. Uh, we, Like you said, uh, satellite winners, we guaranteed over 40 satellite winners. We ended up with 54 satellite winners. Really awesome. Plus the 200. It was over 400,000 in the prize pool before it was shuffle up and deal. That's great. And so yeah, this is this is great. Obviously a lot of events. And then the next step here is, uh, yeah, the Gardens Casino is an, an official WPT tournament room. So all year long, uh, players will be able to play when they're coming in Los Angeles, our local players, rec players, they'll be able to play and win entries into other WPT tour stops throughout the globe. Uh, more information will be released on that mm -hmm. very soon. I, I'm hoping actually that it would be uh, very, you know, within within a week or so. I, I know they're just finishing up everything before the big announcement on yep. that, but it is an official WT tournament room, so uh, that'll be very cool for you know a lot of the players, like we said, get to sweat their satellite buddies that went into this event. Now they can sweat them on a global scale. You know, somebody goes to Vegas, somebody goes yep. to the East Coast, somebody might go to Europe or wherever else and say, oh, I play with this guy in this tournament or in this cash game, and now all of a sudden he's over here and trying to win big on the World Poker Tour. Really cool. And uh, yeah, the yeah, Cards is the place for that. Yeah, anything to uh, obviously grow the game and it's good for the game, as I like to say a lot, and um, really get behind it. So that's why, you know, yeah, we talk about, um, you know, whether it's WSOP, Poker Stars, whatever, um, and then WPT, you have these huge brands that are global and they all are at the same cause, which is to get new people to play poker, have fun playing poker, and, you know, basically grow the game and make all of these things uh, happen. And it's when you put the Gardens Casino with this new facility, what we've been able to accomplish here and the WPT together, it's just the perfect um, marriage, basically, of, of doing all of those things that are good for poker. Awesome. Checking in on the action right here. Men fired a bet with top pair on the flop, 400K. Jake called with a gut shot, straight draw. Jake checks. Jake checks the turn. Nine of diamonds, Men still with the best hand here. He's gonna double check his cards just to make sure he's got top pair. One of the interesting things that we've seen as men checks here at this final table is the use of the time extension chips that have to do with the action clock, which you are one of the creators of. So how did that how did that come about? Like what what spawned the idea like, hey, we need to get a clock into the game. We've talked about it for a while in the poker industry, and now you really put to the test with something that is truly state of the art. I've seen it, I've played a little bit with it. It's really awesome. Players all seem to love it. You guys can see it right there in front of the dealer with those red numbers. Uh, ticking down from 30 seconds for each action. Yeah, so it's not like uh, we reinvented uh, the wheel, so to speak, or came up with this great idea of, hey, uh, you know, other other TV shows and other things have used something mm -hmm. as far as a clock to make them act. Uh, it never really caught on, and the reason why is because within the industry, you need something that is intuitive for the dealers. You need something that you know they can sit down, use, operate, and all players um, can see, dealers can use. And uh, what what we've done is we actually it's made for poker by poker, and that's kind of how I see it because we, I can see a lot of things as far as the technology that's out there, and then.